Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, CCX here. Welcome back to the second episode of the Tower of Temptation. In the last episode, we end up making our way to, I think you want to say the third floor or second floor or whatever floor. And then I end up basically speaking about a lot of things, but whatever. This is the second part of the Tower of Temptation. If you missed this, if you missed the first episode and don't really know how to actually get there, I end up giving you a bit of a synopsis real quick. Head to the east of the spaceship of Alent of a lent and then you could be able to go and climb up a ridge you need to go through a hole and you know about a boom and that's it anyways uh i was in the last episode i was mainly talking about like how the story is being written in this game how you know ball didn't really have like any significance to the plot until like later in the game and for for the most part he was essentially just fixated on finding the spirit stone. Now the thing is, we don't, we didn't really know what entails of the spirit stone, so eh, whatever. All right, now this area here, you won't really be opening all the doors yet, but you will be opening opening only one as of right now. You will be opening the black door and the green door a little bit later, but we'll get to that later. For right now, we got ourselves some new enemies here, and these guys are ghosts, they like to teleport around, they will aggro you, and they will probably go on top of you. Sometimes when enemies do teleport and go on top of you, you won't get ambushed, but don't think that it will always happen. These are Lelilas, or whatever they're called. Also weak to physical attacks. Don't bother, um... I should also say they're weak to special attacks. Don't bother trying to use physical attacks against them, because if you try to, they, well, I'm actually going to showcase it with Fina, but if you try to um, hit them with physical attacks, they do have a chance of dodging you and evade, well, invading you by teleporting, and that can be quite annoying. I'm going to showcase it now with Fina. As you can see here, there you go. So, yeah, there's another enemy that is immune to physical attacks, and I end up using, like, a bunch of physical attacks for no reason, like a dope. It's more so weak to magic than physical, but I'm an idiot, so what are you going to do? Now, anyways, uh, when you end up going through the Tower of Temptation the first time, I will admit that you probably will get lost, you will get confused, and you will get frustrated. But I will say this. It's a typical RPG secret dungeon. Secret dungeons are always going to have that sort of issue where... The secret dungeons go on longer than the final area. But, you want to know what I do like about secret dungeons in my RPG games? But first, before I actually go into that detail, got ourselves new enemies, Toad Demons. Why are these guys called Toad Demons when they don't even look like toads? I have no idea. They look more like gargoyles, but you want to know something? I'm not the creator of this game, and nor am I the designer of the enemies. Also, we to physical attacks. Special attacks. I keep saying physical. I know they're not we I know it's different, but whatever. My point is kill them, kill them. That's it. Use specials. That's all you need. Throughout this entire dungeon, use specials. Only specials. I think that the only dungeon that's probably not weak to no actually all the Now that I think about it, I think the only thing that you probably can do to be able to beat this game without any problems is probably just getting special attacks all over. Because the weapons in this game, they don't the monsters don't really have much immunity against physical all that much in terms of special, but when you're using magic, forget it. Unless you run out of special, then you kind of screw it, but whatever. Anyways, the thing I like about um, um, Secret Dungeons and RPGs is more so because of the fact that if you can beat it, you can also beat the final boss. Kind of like how... Because the boss in this dungeon is actually stronger than the final few bosses that you face in the final level. So that's actually pretty interesting. This tablet here has the ability of spinning the corridor. You just need to spin it in the direction so that you can be able to just cross through the path without any worries. And that's really all you're doing. You're just going down from the 6th and the 5th floor repeatedly until you can progress through the right area. It's, it can be annoying, but it's not that bad. But yeah, I like I like my secret dungeons. I don't like secret dungeons that kind of go on forever with no save point in between. But, eh, that's, those are rare cases. Alright, now I should more so say something... I ha 
haven't really played Grandia 3, so if somebody wants to give me like some information on Grandia 3, is that a bad Grandia game? Because the only Grandias I've played, I mean, I know I don't like extreme because I don't like the fact that you always have to be in battle stance constantly. Because the thing about what made Grandia extreme weird is that first of all, the ATB bar is weird. It's a circular, it, it's, it's, first of all, it's, it's a circular ATB bar. It's not even a bar, it's an ATB circle, which, to be honest, that turns me off, like, hard. Also, you can, I didn't even bother to even open that wall there. That was my own fault. I'm not sure if I do go back to open it. I probably don't. Oh, well. Uh, I don't really know what's by that wall, but it, it was probably something important. Anyways, you open this, you can get yourself a new weapon for rep, which is a demon boomerang. It's a demon, yeah, demon, a demon boomerang, which actually is effective against demons. Kind of useless for the bosses, however, but it ends up um, increasing Raps' attack strength, and that's all I really care about. Anyways, um, yeah, Grandia Extremes' ATB circle bar is not even that great. Like, it's really not, like... I know it's not. I know it's not called the ATB bar, but I just call it that because you know. Actually, isn't that what it's called? Anyways, we have ourselves new enemies here. These are the ghost enemies that I was talking about. These guys are resistance. Are no wait, not resistance. They are immune to physical attack. So do not. I repeat, do not use physical attacks against them. I will be using two physical attacks against them, like a dope. So yeah. Use magic attacks, they are weak to magic. I mean, don't get me wrong, there are some people that likes grinding extreme, and that's fine, but the fact is is that you have to slowly you, you have to slowly strut your way through levels is not fun. You have to always be in battle stance or battle ready. Mind you, it may it helps you avoid back attacks. That's great. But you want to know something else? It also doesn't help that the fact that you're kind of, you always are walking very slowly. i rather take the back attacks. The only reason why they do that is because it, you don't have like a group aligned party surrounding you this time. It's just you. And it's mainly a dungeon crawler type of game more so than a, a Grandia game. Like it's kind of the reason as to why people don't really associate Grandia Extreme as a number. That's why it's called Grandia Extreme and not called Grandia 3. Grandia 2 and 3 are like traditional Grandia games. That's not to say Grandia Extreme is not a traditional Grandia game either. Either It just plays differently. And it plays so differently to a point that it kind of detracts itself from the gameplay that Grandia 1 and 2 has established. Grania 2 doesn't change the formula all that much. In fact, it's almost one for one from the original. The only difference is, is that PS2 now, so you have actual models and not sprites. So yeah, I mean, I I can leave or I can take it or leave it. And there are like a lot of people that kind of want them. They this is a very underrated game. I will say this now, like, if you probably look at LPs of this game, you probably will see, like, barely a lot of them, which I don't, I mean, even the big RPG, um, people probably have never really touched Grandia either, and that's fine, like, I won't lie, I kind of like, um, RPG games that are rare, to be honest, because it means that you, you basically know about the game more than a group of a many of group of people mind you that just ends up saying that you won't be able to talk about it all that much but that's not to say that it's a bad game if it's like a rare occasion it just means that you have you sometimes you have a game that's a unique taste to you like you're gonna like it but not many other people is gonna like it like i don't mind overrated games i don't mind that but it's it's fine like, it's fine. It's just that sometimes I more so look forward to the rare games that I will sometimes pick up and end up enjoying myself. I can't say Kingdom Hearts is like that. I can't say... Well, Chrono Cross is like that for the most part. Grandia is definitely like that. Gotcha Force for from Capcom, the, the fighting battle board type of game is like that. I want to also say... Um, 
I forgot that game. Robo something. I, I don't... Uh, Cyber something. I forgot what it's called. It was on the GameCube. And uh, you play as a mini robot. You threw like a cube and the timer went off. And then your cube started a fight. Was it Cubox? Cubix? No, it's not Cubix. I highly doubt it will ever be Cubix. <laughs> I don't know. I forgot what the name is. I'm sorry. I want to say it's... No, it's not Robot Alchemist Drive, which, by the way, that was also a good Square Enix game. They really should bring that back. Robot Alchemist Drive was essentially uh, also an underrated game because it was essentially a game... It, think of Mega XLR just with um, actual death can actually happen. Even though the game's story was literally like a robot story. I'm not going to lie to that. Cause it, it, it's weird because you can pick three characters. And I don't think... There's like... One of them is female. And I'm not sure if the... It, it, it's, it, it's, it's odd. It's just odd. Because... I mean... There's nothing wrong with that. I, I don't know. I, I, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm being stupid when I end up saying... When I'm about to end up saying. But I, I'm, I'm going to just say it anyways. I don't know, I think the story probably changed if you play as the female character. I want to say that the girl was in a relationship with the two male characters, but then again, if she was in a relationship with the two male characters, that'd be kind of that'd be kind of odd. Because the other two characters don't even exist in the story, whoever you end up picking. And this ghost bastard is just right here, just standing in your way. He's kind of like a Pac-Man ghost is waiting for you. But yeah. Anyways, we've now made it up to the 7th floor. Now it's time to actually deactivate those switches. Oh boy, talking for a good, and yeah, this is 40 minutes. I know that most of you people were probably wondering, why have your parts been inconsistent? Why are some of them short, and why are some of them long? You want to know why? Because I never can actually figure out a point of where to stop the game. Usually it's mostly because there's like major plot happening, and I kind of want to keep the plot from going. I don't, I don't want to just stop the plot entirely, so yeah, I kind of, I kind of just make the plot just... Just settle in and make you guys get all the important plot points instead of just ending the part at a very weird, awkward moment. Because that usually happens to a lot of people where they just kind of just cut the part and it's like, oh, okay, whatever. I don't mind it, but eh, it's still weird. Would I want a Grandia sequel? Eh, no, not really. Because in all honesty... Some games, whenever they end up, when people end up asking, can we get a sequel to such and such? Uh, you also have to take consideration of how the story ends. Like, if the story ends on a high note, then you don't need a sequel. Open this door over here, and you get yourself Lietes' Ultima Weapon. Ultimate! Damn it, I keep saying Ultima. Spirit Staff. This staff has the capabilities of casting Helv, which essentially ends up getting rid of all status elements. The life staff also... That's okay. I didn't even say what the life staff does. The life staff heals you, but eh, who cares. Anyways, that bat enemy is not a bat brain, and if you notice that it looks like a slightly color version of a bat colored version of a Gaia enemy. Or the Gaia battler, I should say. That's because this is what's going to happen later on in the game. Say hello to Gaia Brains. Yeah. There are also Gaia type enemies. I won't say what actually happens because I don't really remember to be honest. If I, I don't know. It's probably going to come back to me once I actually get to it. All I know is that after this place we're going to Lizette Mountain anyway. So who cares? But just like the Bat Brains, these guys are also weak to magic. They're not really that... Right. They're not unique at all. They're still also weak to magic. But yeah, oh, I didn't, the, the game. This game doesn't really need a sequel. I mean, I'm glad that museum type game though was never released for us, like at all. And what I would have liked if I can get like an emulator for this game, I would like to use an actual replay code to just friggin' give myself 99 to everything, just so I can just curve stop the entire game because i mean you you there's no new game plus and since there's no new game plus you don't really have the capabilities of being broken i would have loved the new game plus this game would have deserved it but eh, it's whatever now um 
That's all NATO. You guys already know what that move does already. Actually, no, you don't. You guys don't know what that move does. In fact, you guys will never see what that move does. I guess I'll showcase it in the next episode. But anyways, um, eh, I would have preferred if we did have it. And I also would have preferred that this game had a new game plus. So that way I can just go through the entire game beating all the bosses that annoy me. But then again, I would say with all the grinding that I have done in this game, it really did make me beat all the bosses that annoyed me. Because the rune guard, I couldn't beat. I couldn't beat the three bosses in Alent. I couldn't... I don't think I had trouble with... I didn't... Oh, yeah. I also had trouble with... Um, with Ball, for the most part. I also had trouble with the final dungeon... Because you have to fight. There are two bosses in that area too. Before you fight the final boss. And let's just say. Let me just say this. When I first played the game. I struggled. I really struggled. To get to the end. Of that game. When I successfully beated. The one of the One of the final bosses. I was like. Yes! I finally beat him as it took me so long to beat him. And then I found out that that wasn't even the real boss. And then I found the real boss, which had 9,999 HP. Now I'm going to actually cut this because I'm heading back to the save point and just telling you guys that so you guys know what I'm doing. But yeah, I, I couldn't beat him. I was, I, I mean, I could have just leveled up myself, but the thing is, though, is that you've seen, you well, you haven't seen how slow it is. All right, now, for this area here, you don't want to go through these pathways, because one of these pathways sports holes. Well, all these pathways sports holes. There is one hole that you want to drop down. By the way, this is the last, well, this is not technically, that red demon thing that you saw, which is called Satan, that's... The second to last enemy, the Naga Queen. This is the final enemy that's in the Tower of Temptation. I should also warn you guys something. All the enemies that you've seen, the Brain Bats hang out with the, I want to say, with the Dragon Knights. The Dragon Knights hang out with the Jackals. The um, Naga Queens hang out with nobody. The Lanninals hang out with Satan. And the Satans can also hang out with the Toad Demons. Yeah, they kind of have them in like a set place. Another thing I should mention. If you fall down the wrong hole. And I do have the item in the other save files. I don't have the life staff because I didn't go for it. But whatever. Um, if you go down there, you'll be in a maze. And you have to fight a few enemies here and there. But... If you do get to like the end where you have to drop down to the seventh floor, you can open a door that will give you running shoes. It essentially ends up speeding up your character, but you guys probably can figure that out for yourself. If you want to try to get most of the items, uh, I recommend it. Play the game yourself and try to go through the entire area to find everything. Now, once you drop down that hole, that Pacific hole, you can't get back. You're stuck here forever. Uh, well, you're stuck here until you reset the game. Or until you have beaten the um, the bosses. The three bosses. I could have fought in the Satan there, but I kind of didn't want to spend any more of my, um, my MP anymore. I was thinking of going back down, but I chose not to because there really was no point. So I decided to say screw it. Now, the thing about these three bosses is that there are two with two parts... And there's one with three parts. The one with three parts is the hardest. And it's also the reason why this is 40-something part, 40-something um, minutes. The other two bosses are bosses that you've already fought in the first disc. I kind of like that we're fighting these bosses. I mean, I could have preferred, like, other bosses, but whatever. Anyways, the first boss is, like, the Ganymede. And this is the Gargoyle. The Gargoyle has two pieces to himself, but just like the original, his two pieces are exactly the same. Now, here's something I actually did not realize. Um, Liete and Justin have crit attacks. Midair Cut 
and Lietis's red shock are crit moves. What that means is is that you guys know that crit move crit critical damage has the capability of canceling out enemies. So if you use that ability, you can not only push back your opponent, but you can also end up um, canceling them out without any issues. Now, the thing I would say about these fights is that you can more so lose um, a lot of elements, and you can lose a lot of magic and a lot of uh, a lot of uh, damn it, mm, a lot of SP. The game doesn't tell you this, but you should kind of figure it out for yourself that you should get blue and gold potions with you. You should bring them with you. I think it's called blue pill or whatever. You should bring it with you so that way you can, every time you've defeated one of the bosses, you can essentially try to cr create your own save point is essentially what I'm trying to say. The first two bosses are not that bad. The second, the last boss is a little bit tough. The second boss to the three trio is only difficult if you're not fast. It's kind of a boss that you've already fought. It was at the end of disc one. I'm not sure if you guys remember it, but if you don't, no, that's fine. You guys are going to see him anyways. Who cares? Anyways, just keep dishing out attacks. I mean, I have, like, nothing to really say about the about these boss fights. I mean, I will, I will go into detail of what they can do. In fact, I should go into detail of what this one can do. He will suck you in, and he will also hit you with his tail, and he will also hit you with his head. He also has the rush attack, which we are going to see. Or not. Okay, not yet. We are going to see him do the, his rush move where he darts in the center of the room because he's kind of stuck. Thank God that the three bosses that we're facing don't move. I mean, am I right? That would be bad. <laughs> oh, man. But, yeah. His enemies are mm, not that bad. I like their recolors. Like, it's kind of... It, I like their recolors because it's kind of like they're rusted. That's kind of what it feels like to me. It's like they're rusted versions of themselves, of their original selves, but, eh, whatever. I don't know why he's called a gargoyle, you know? That's the last thing I'd think of a gargoyle, but whatever. But, he's nearing the end of death. And here comes Rush Attack. Fun thing about Rush Attack is that it kind of ends up spreading out your entire team. That's probably, like, the only problem with most of their moves. But, eh. It comes with a territory with all the monsters in this game. All healer will be your best friend because at least this, with all healer, it ends up healing you to full health, I want to say. So you should be good and fresh and rare to go. And just keep lather, wrist, repeat until he dies. Special attacks are literally your best friend in, this, in these last few fights. But you made it this far. So don't go ahead and lose. End up beating your opponents. And you won't have to fear anything. I mean, besides, once you end up reaching the top, you really feel it. Like, you really end up liking that. All right, I made it to the top. I can get the best items in the game that's nowhere else to find. Because, seriously, they really are not. Anyways, that is the end of the reskin of Ganymede. Goodbye, gargoyle, you silly little spiky bastard. And he drops an SP potion, which essentially don't use it. It's a spirit potion. And he also dropped the magic rod. I'm not going to use the magic rod. Spirit potion. That ends up restoring 99 of everything. Except for SP. Think of it, you think it, it ends up saying SP potion, but no, it's not SP potion. It's um, spirit potion. You're going to be utilizing that for the final area. So don't use it here. If you use it here... Reset the game and do the entire dungeon again. <laughs> no, I'm actually being serious, cause it's a very it's a good item to utilize once you've gotten to the final, once you've beaten the final boss. So yeah. Anyways, to be able to be sure, my issue with the game is that when I put it to smooth and stretch it out, for some reason, whenever you get that error sound effect, the sound effect um stings. What I mean by that is that it makes a it makes a 
a static noise, which I don't understand that. It even does that for the TV, which is weird. I'm just not sure if it's because it's the emulation of how how the PlayStation um, store does it, but whatever. Anyways, of course, you can not you can pass by the enemy. You also can't get a back attack. That would be weird. Introducing the Grin Whale reskin, and I call him the Slugfish. Hey, this is his problem, and he actually looks like a slug. Just like the Grin Whale, the thing will always cast Entice on both Rep and Justin to be able to get them closer and then bite them. You don't want to. You don't want that to happen. You want to be sure to keep dishing out as much damage as you can to the Lord to be able to destroy it. He does still sport the same exact moves as the Grin Whale does. He does sport the electrical attack, which does a lot of damage. He does sport the body slam, and he does sport spew, which ends up eating your characters. So, yeah, there's that. But anyways, that's actually really it. He doesn't... I kind of can say this, is that the two bosses that you face don't really have anything that differentiates their original counterparts which is a bit shameful really because they're literally one from one the only difference is, is that all of them has vanished but you already knew that already all the bosses are gonna have vanished at this point because they just don't want you to well i would say all the bosses but i think the final few bosses don't really have vanished but i don't know that i i this is actually the first time I've ever actually utilizing Symphony so much. I never had Symphony at... Well, I never utilized Symphony this much to a point that it's, like, so wonderful. Now, I'm actually not sure if Rep has a critical move. If he did, I kind of wish I knew what it was, but whatever. Because you see how it says critical spinning attack? It says you're essentially doing not only a lot of damage, but you're also doing crit to go ahead and cancel them out. And of course, canceling out your opponents is such a lovely thing. But yeah, this boss is also not really that strong. He's actually weak as well. The gargoyle and him are both very weak. And it's sad too, because you think that they will be strong, but they're not. But eh, it's whatever, I guess. I mean, what are you gonna do? Oh, right, once you've actually done like enough. And also, for some reason, this happens. I don't know what happens, but the boss kind of stops. Like he was about to cast Vanish, but look what happened to him. Look what happened to him. He's not moving at all. I don't know what happened to him, but I think we broke him. We broke him so bad that. He didn't even get the chance to do anything. Now that I think about it, he did not get to do anything. He didn't get to do one move throughout this entire fight. Huh. That explains why the final fight actually took long. Hmm. That makes sense. Seems like whenever I end up having like a good time, I always end up having a screwed up time in the end. Eh, whatever. Anyways, that is the second boss. And now for the final boss in the Tower of Temptation. The boss that basically ends up saying that if you can beat him, you can beat the final boss. In fact, if you beat him, you will have the capabilities of defeating the final boss. It's the final fight. And it's a boss that basically gave us a mana egg for the first time. And gave us the introduction to not only Fina, but also the introduction to magic in general. Uh, this is by far the most hardest boss in the game, only because of the fact that he has three parts to himself. Not only that, he's a bigger variant. He's a bigger, deadly variant version of his counterpart, and he actually has different moves for once. So. Once you're fully ready and fully recovered, and you're ready to face the final 12th, 12th floor boss, get ready. It's time to face the Leviathan. No, not that Leviathan. 7,890, or 69, I guess. I don't know. I, I did it. It went by so quick. Uh, <laughs> anyways, the Leviathan. Is right hit the first arm you want to take out first is actually his left his 
Well, it actually doesn't really matter. Well, actually, no, it does. You want to take out both of them, but the left arm has the left tentacle has the capabilities of using suck in. Now, the reason why he will suck you in is because he also has a beam attack that will shoot in a straight direction. Not only that, his right tentacle has all healer. The monster, the Leviathan also has the capabilities of healing automatically, which you'll probably see at some point. You don't want to see that. The right tentacle also has zap. The head also has zap all because why not? And, you know, so on and so forth. But the reason why you want to take out both of his tentacles is not because of the two of the separate moves that they can do. If you leave the two tentacles alone and only go straight for the head, he's going to cast Twin Typhoon. And Twin Typhoon is not a very fun ability. Think of it as a mini Halnado. What I mean by that is that Halnado, essentially, it creates a massive tornado and it kind of also throws your, um, your party members in the air and kind of spreads them out. Twin Typhoon does the same thing, but the thing is is that it's probably always guaranteed to hit everybody. He's also going to cast Vanish as well, so you can kind of manipulate his AI by doing that. I don't really recommend it because for some reason, since I'm technically manipulating his AI with the whole Vanish crap, it kind of screwed me up, so I'm essentially getting bad RNG with him, so that sucked. So yeah, um, another thing. When he does do Twin Typhoon, he is going to spread out your character and is, is one of his most damaging moves. But, of course, his most ultimate move is actually the Beam Eye. We're never going to see that because I never give him the chance. But you will see Twin Typhoon, and that's the kind of ability you never want to get hit by. Well, it's an ability you don't want to get hit by a lot, I should say. Also, right arm heals for 100, which is kind of annoying. Get rid of it immediately but yeah who knew that you'll actually be facing the squid king very um recolor i gotta admit though for a recolor okay. he actually lives up to his name the squid king is essentially the boss that basically gives a lot of first time goers um deaths and i like that i like that he's a literal threatening boss for once I mean, I don't understand why the Tower of Temptation reuses bosses, to be honest. It's kind of odd, but eh, whatever. Using Reps' Neo Demon Ball will be able to get rid of the left tentacle. That basically ends up mitigating at least one issue that we have. So, yeah. But yeah, the, the, I, I really... You're essentially prepping your party for these three bosses. Well, the Leviathan specifically, not for the other two bosses. The other two bosses can probably be beaten without even trying. But, eh, whatever. So, yeah. Have you guys ever actually... For people who probably are gonna watch this, like, five years from now or whatever. Yeah, I have that low confidence in people watching my videos. Who cares? Um... Have you guys made it to the Tower of Temptation? And for your thoughts, what do you guys actually think of it? Do you guys like the hard difficulty that it gives you? Do you like that your enemies, for some reason, have very massive defense that basically means jack and all? Because I love that, he says with a non-smile on his face. I also didn't know that he had zap all when I did this fight a second time. So I was like, oh, crap, he got zap all? What? I was like, damn, son. Since when you got yourself some badass move? And you want to know what I like about the electric moves that he has? It's essentially a contrast to his um, original version where he had Howl. So, yeah, there's that. But, yeah, the boss is essentially almost done. I have to admit... I was worried about this place the first time, but after doing it the second after doing it the second time after my first run, I didn't realize how easy it is to get through. It's only hard if you're if you're not prepared to fight the three bosses. That's it. Cuz you're more so worried that oh no, I don't have the capabilities of 
healing. I don't have the capabilities of restoring my, um, I don't have the ability to restore my MP or my SP. So how am I supposed to beat all these bosses with just, with just the limited amount of resources? And then you end up remembering that you have to actually come prepare for these secret boss, for these secret dungeons. You can't expect the dungeons to just go easy on you. If that's kind of that, that that's kind of not what RPGs do. RPGs are supposed to challenge you. They challenge you so that, you know, you can try to come up with strategies that are basically your own. Now, there is no strategy for this boss like at all cuz the way how I'm fighting is the way how I fought practically every boss thus far. Use my special attacks until keep staggering the boss until I can be able to kill them and that's really it. That's not really a strategy. That's just that's just a common knowledge that people basically go through once they first play this game. First time goers, they, you probably won't have like no idea. Now, I end up stating that the book that I had basically probably did mention this area. I don't think it did. I don't know. But if it did, all right. Now, he is going to use Vanish. And I'm going to go ahead and just let him waste a turn because he could have used he could have used his laser eye to shoot Rep and Fina, but he decided to use the flashing bind the fat the, the the flash bang of Vanish. So he's essentially just wasted a turn like a dope. But eh, whatever. I'm not I'm not a Leviathan, so whatever. And what a weird monster to call, because. When I think of Leviathan, I think of the actual serpent, not a squid. <laughs> uh. but yeah, the right tentacle is almost done and over with. I ended up contemplating if I wanted to just defeat the head first, but... Oh, I should also mention, I don't know what the hell is wrong with this game, but this boss drops something. He drops an accessory called the man's cap. He never drops it for me. I probably done this fight three times and on the PSP version I mean on the PSP gameplay I didn't get it on this practice gameplay I didn't get it on the actual let's play I still didn't get it I don't know if you in, there's no steal in this game either he never the other bosses drop their correspondent items but him nah man he doesn't drop anything. Now, I was trying to use Star Symphony before he had the ability of casting Vanish, but Leite was faster than him, so she cast Vanish. I mean, she she essentially casted a buff, and he's going to use Vanish to get rid of our buff. So this is kind of pointless, to say the least. <laughs> but yeah, what are you going to do? Anyways, and immediately casts Vanish. Flashbang! But anyways, now it's it, it's kind of over now. Once we use midair cut against this arm, it will go away. Kabuya, that's another tentacle gone. And now we just essentially just wail on him. We just kill him. That's it. We're pretty much done with the fight. Cause he's not gonna be able to. Eat. Yeah, you see how I think he can heal. I don't even know. Whatever, just kill him, guys. I end up contemplating if I wanted to go. I wanted to defeat him with end of the world, but I couldn't. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. But I'm actually glad. I'm glad I didn't really have a hard time with this dungeon. And I'm sorry that it was post. I know you guys are... I know most people don't really like post dungeon commentary all that much but to be perfectly honest i wanted to actually have some sort of leeway of cutting out fights oh yeah i think we are gonna see laser eye my bad oh no 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 that's right he he wastes he wastes a turn by sucking us in just so he can shoot us which mind you doesn't really do anything because justin rep and fina are not even in the line of sight but it also ended up teaching me something that water can still level up even with using, um, using, um, what you call, um, you, ah, damn it, my brain is hurting. Uh, 
Water can still level up even when your opponents are, when your characters are all at full health. So that's good. All right. Another thing I have to mention about, I, I and it, it's very important. Um. Well, actually, no, there's nothing important. Never mind. Anyways, Justin is so powerful that he actually does enough damage to a point that I do not even get end of the world out. And that's it. That is the end of the Tower of Temptation, folks. All right. Big win for us. Three whole boss fights. One, three bosses that basically were all in disc one. So, Tower of Temptation, more like Tower of Nostalgia. Well, for the most part, not really, because... Uh, actually, wait, no. Wasn't that guard... Wasn't the Ganymede in disc two? No, no, no. No, he wasn't. He wasn't in this too. Because Sue wasn't in um this too. Never mind. Yeah, the Ganymede was in um disc one. The Ganymede, the Leviathan, and the Ganymede, the Squid King, and um the Grin Whale were all in disc two. You'd think the Grin Whale would have been the last boss, but then again they wanted to save the best for last, which is essentially the boss that kicked your ass the first time. But once you have reached the top of the Tower of Temptation, you are sported with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine wonderful treasure chests. The first treasure is the head spike thing, which is the most powerful, the powerful hammer or the powerful axe. The rage ring, which essentially gives you SP as you take damage. I know it's not a counter attack, it wouldn't make any sense. And then you got yourself a revival. And then you got yourself a random seed. Yes, a defensive seed, mind you. I don't use it right away because it doesn't really matter. I think I don't even know who I use it for in the other plate in the thing. You get yourself a tiara. Open the chest, another chest, and you get yourself the holy crown. Open this another chest. It's like the price is right. It's like you won everything. There another revival, but the most best two accessory items in the game is the Astro Mirage Ring and bum -ba -da -da, the Ethro Mirage Ring. Now these two accessories are by far your grinding rings. What I mean by that is because the Ethro Miracle, uh, I said Mirage, I mean, doubles magic, and the Astro Miracle doubles weapon skill experience. And trust me, it shows. And Ring of Rage restores many SP with damage. It really shows how much you get from from having these accessories on. I equip it to I equip the Holy Crown to Justin because it's been a while since he actually had something, and since friggin' Rep has something, who cares? And the Staff of Life, the Hurt Spike, is what it's called. I guess it's a it's a pun off a of hurt, hurt spike. Whatever game and the magic rod, which I didn't really showcase. Anyways, end up putting the tiara to the fairy tiara on Fina because well she's our main character and she also has the lower defense than um Liete. I actually equip it on the other playthrough. You can also use the stash to be able to stash any items that you have left, which in all honesty, you kind of really shouldn't have any items left considering the fact that, oh, by the way, be sure to stash um, the the soldier stones before you come here, which is actually going to suck because I already said it, but whatever. That's the end of the Tower of Temptation, folks. In the next episode, we'll be traveling to Lizette Mountain and continue on with the story. I've been CCX, and I'll be seeing you guys next time. Laters! Thank you.